Hello guys and welcome back to another Sons of the Forest video. In the last video, we built this lake house in the middle of the lake and I'm really happy with it, but it required a lot of work and a lot of learning about the mechanics when it comes to building in Sons of the Forest. And so I think I've got a few interesting things that you might not know about the game's mechanics that I'd like to share with you. So if you do find this video helpful, please do hit the thumbs up. If you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. And note that we'll be covering some basic stuff as well as the, well, we'll cover everything. This is going to be the ultimate build guide, hopefully. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. We should probably talk about how to get the logs down. First thing, you can obviously knock the forest down from a higher point over the cliffs and down to here. That will work fine for a small build. However, for much larger builds, you're going to need a huge amount of logs. So for that, I highly recommend, uh, first of all, grabbing something like the fire axe or the chainsaw, but also to cut the trees down into the river and create a little dam. There are also little fords that this works perfectly in as well, but it's a great way to reduce the amount of labor that you have to deal with and let the, the water do the work for you so that you can pick up the logs back at your base. Alternatively, you can use the rope gun. So with this, we can connect this to somewhere such as here and then grab our logs and we can send it down. Uh, we can also use this as well, so it works well. And it is a much faster way of transporting the logs. However, it does require you to be actively adding each of the logs to the zip line. Another thing to point out, there are various duplication glitches at the moment, which allow you to harvest resources or duplicate resources much quicker. Uh, one such one is where you place down a log on the floor, add a stick and then knock it over. This will duplicate the log, um, but you can expect this to probably be patched pretty quickly. But now that we know how to get our logs, let's go back to the area and start working out how the systems work. And by the way, if you do want to know how to get the chainsaw or the rope gun, along with all the other weapons and equipment in the game, do check the card in the top right now. It's a video that we've just done, which is going to tell you all of the locations and how to get those said weapons and equipment. And here we are in our training ground. Now, the first thing that I want to mention is once you've placed an item down, you can pick it up and take it off from its place area by holding down C, providing it's not sorting, uh, supporting something. We also have two different methods of building. If we look at this, we have on the right hand side, our manual placement. This is a manual itself, and it will tell you how to do all the things. We're going to cover a lot of these as well as some more advanced stuff that you should bear in mind at the end. And then if we hold down X, we're given the blueprint system, which will allow us to build various um, platforms and some, bu some um, builds themselves, such as the small log cabin. Uh, this is much easier to set up. And then we also have the uh, stick beds and furniture storage, all that kind of stuff. If we close this, we're going to be talking mainly about the manual build placements today. So if we right click with the logs, we have the option to place it at a log horizontally. If we right click again, vertically. So when it comes to vertical placement, providing you have a log down, you can snap another log to its joint and you can place this providing nothing else is on top you can place a wall uh, a vertical log against a or on top of a horizontal placed one when it comes to the logs if four have been placed on the floor together like this you'll be able to place down floorboards there is one thing i should mention though if you use just three you may notice that this is slightly sunken in the ground. If you place your floorboards now, this is going to become a gentle ramp. Another thing that you can do is when placing floorboards here, you don't necessarily need to have 
four logs to create a flat floorboard. However, I recommend it for the first one and then after that you can remove the center pieces and fill this out to create a uh, flat surface. You'll also notice here, we haven't done that. There is a slight ramp here. And if you're not careful, you do have to be very aware of the positioning. As you can see here, one is slightly lower than the other and this has created a weird kind of ramp. So if things aren't snapping together, make sure that you haven't got any of your platforms on different heights. When it comes to this build uh, system, the mechanics in this game, it's really important that you get your uh, foundations placed correctly. The same with your supports, which we're going to talk about, uh, because it will throw you off when you come around to doing your uh, roofing, and this can cause you a lot of headaches. When it comes to placing logs, we can also take our axe, and from here we can cut it. Now there are three places in which we can cut it. If we cut it here, it's going to be a, a three quarter log in, in terms of its height. And we also have a one quarter. And if we cut it again, we'll have a half and two quarter pieces. Another thing with these is that you can create using this various fences. And the way that you will do this, if we grab these, is to place these down and then grab your full log and connect them together. You'll notice that if you're doing a um, multiple in a line, your second horizontal log will be on the floor. This is perfectly fine. You'll either need to grab a small piece and place it down, or depending on how low it is, you may just have to add another piece uh, to the end and this will continue until you seal this in on all the sides. You can place defensive walls, again we'll be talking about this more in depth later, by placing the logs against the edge of another vertical log. And from here to stop cannibals jumping over we can find a position and just chop the top off. And don't worry if you've um, not placed it in the right position, you can just pick it up again, place it down, and you have the full log to chop. Uh, the last thing on defensive walls, we're not going to go into traps at the moment, but there are these hedgehog spikes which aren't mentioned in the manual. So to produce this, you're going to need to grab yourself a stick, and from here you're going to place it in the ground. Now with sticks, they work similarly to vertical logs. We can create a, um, a fence there. I've actually run out of sticks, but if we grab another, we'll be able to place another one down. Or should we wish we can grab our ax on a single stick and snap these into place. These are going to damage any enemies that walk into them. I thought Kelvin was going to demonstrate that then. And from here, we can grab our rocks to reinforce these spikes, these hedgehog spikes. The next thing that I want to talk about is supports. So if we grab some of these, you'll notice that we can place this down and we have this down arrow. The arrows are, uh, dictate where the log is gonna go. So we're gonna place this here. Now. Uh, this is leaning against this log. If we grab another two, you'll notice that we can place, if we, we point at the bottom section, we can place another one and it will lift it up so that it's supported. And this will allow us to build another level on top of this. If I uh, place this log here, we can now run up here and we can place these on top to support a higher roof. However, if we want to branch out at all, if we want to bring a, a log on the top support coming out horizontally, you'll need to do the level below first of all. This of course will make your builds quite cluttered when it comes to like the internals because you have a lot of struts. You can actually remove some of these. 
I've just removed the top logs to this and I wanted to do this to show you that once you've extended uh, these supports, you cannot remove the top beams or the bottom ones. That is because they're reliant on each other to uh, keep the build up. You cannot remove the other. In fact, we can probably show this off if we grab our ax. So if we knock that one down, see how everything collapses. Setting up the support again, I did want to also mention that if you have two logs together, you cannot place another one on top. You need to have them supported by two underneath, first of all. When it comes to these supports though, we can make them stronger. But if we remove this one, this is where we were before, we can actually go another distance. The max is three logs wide without any further supports. You'll notice here that we, we cannot remove this. However, if I, oh, I need another log. Now that I've found a log, if we place this in the ground, what we're going to do is grab our ax. And what we're going to do here is just cut it midway through. We're gonna grab this. And if we go to the corners here, we can, in reinforce these supports which will allow us to go further out uh, so each support that you add allows the build to go one section further away so now that we've lifted that up we're going to grab this again and we're going to support this one here doing so will allow us to remove that and here we have the max length wide for a build with supports so that's five wide. The next thing that I wanted to talk about, and this is covered in the booklet, is using ropes. Now you can't use, you can't create gates at the moment. I expect this to change very soon. So if you want a way to access your base, which will give you, which won't leave your base open to um, cannibals running through or mutants running through, you can grab your rope and from there just um, place that on an and an N support or an upside down U. And then from here, you can climb up this. And we can also do this on a wall as well. So you can run up to it and just click on it with the rope and you'll have a roped wall. Windows and doors. Obviously, if you know what we're doing here, just skip ahead in the timestamps below. But from here, we can choose whether we want to create a window by cutting out the inner section. Like so. In order to do the door, you're actually going to have to have a floor and then your your six planks of wood. And from here, we can just click that in place. Currently, we're unable to lock these doors. However, when we can, expect us to have to add something like a stick to the back end. The next thing that I wanted to talk about are joints. So joints are the snapping points for your logs. And I, it took me a while to really understand this um, because I was playing about with the different heights of a build. And I didn't realize why I wouldn't be able to build across. Well, the joint here is this section and also the bottom section here because we haven't added anything else. When it comes to the building system, if you want to play around with adding vertical uh, supports, you're going to have to, let's grab one of these. You're going to have to make sure that you place these down from the get-go. If you want these to, to be placed across, they need to be in place first of all. You can't start building the walls. This can make it very difficult when you're building just on the go, but you can see here how we've now got this to work. Again, you can see how it's registering this as a joint. You also can't remove this without removing the side panels first as well. This can make it frustrating if you're doing a larger build. So do be aware of your joints, where they're going to be as you're building this. In this section here, we're looking at the ramps or the roofs. And if you look here, we have two different angles. We have the lower angle 
and we have a top, uh, like slightly higher angle. In fact, if we place this down, you can see this is the angle that we want for this one, and this one is slightly lower. However, we cannot play with both. You cannot have, at least for the time being, or I haven't worked it out, <clears throat> you cannot have a ramp of one angle on one side and then a different one next to it. As much as I would love to make that a thing. Speaking of ramps, we have two that we can do. Um, the first one is a wide one like this to create the apex of a roof. I will mention if you want to build a wall on the back end so that you could have maybe another roof behind this, that you cannot place the wall first. You must remember this in this game. It will not allow us to add a ramp down from here. You have to place the diagonal pieces, the supporting pieces first, and then do the walls, like so. We can also do a much smaller um, ramp as well. And the way that we will do this, if we place it down here, we're going to grab three quarters of a pole. So we'll grab this. And we're going to place this slap bang in the middle. We're then going to grab a half piece. And from here, the quarter piece. At this point, we can add the edges. So it's slightly different to that version. You'll do the edges last in this one. So if we come across to this and look at the top, you'll notice that these can now be placed. And we now have a much smaller triangle. And these can in fact be um, floored or roofed, whichever way you look at it. Or you can also use this like you would a staircase as well. By the way, if you aren't aware, you can change the style of walkway by right clicking, but you can only choose one style at a time. You cannot mix and match on the, the same piece. The next thing that we're going to talk about is these rope bridges. Now, Kevin, Kelvin, sorry, doesn't like to use these, but they are great for different forms of defenses or for making a bridge across a gap. And the way we create this is you have to make sure that you have some kind of support in place like this or a wall. And then from here, we're going to grab our rope and you'll see that to the top side, mainly show up on one side for you, as you can see here, you're going to click and then we're going to run this over to the other side and it's going to snap into position. Once that's done, you can press it again and you will now have two pieces of rope across and then you need to grab some wood and from here we can break or split these into log floor beams or floor pieces. This is going to be particularly useful if you're doing treehouse builds. Now treehouse builds are built at first, generally speaking, there are exceptions, with this blueprint system. So from here we can we can grab this and find a tree that's suitable, such as this one, and click this down. And all we need to do is grab the wood, uh, which is I think seven pieces in total. And from there, we can just add this on by pressing E and it will build the tree house for us. And you can see we've got one piece here, one type here and another type over here. And there are a few others. However, what you can do is build directly onto a tree. So if you go up to a tree you'll see that we have the white arrows again. This means that we can place down a plank and providing we have another one, you'll be able to start building 
into the tree. And we can do this all the way around. The, the problem with this though, is that you create supports that are able to be attacked by cannibals or mutants. Whereas with the tree houses, they will not attack the tree trunks. At least that's what I've seen so far. That's a really good point. Stairs are a pain. If you do not position them right at the beginning of your build, you could be in trouble. This is what happened in my most recent build. I couldn't place a stairway next to the wall because I had already placed the wall down. So as you can see, like this, it is perfectly feasible. But in order to do this, you need to place down the staircase first which is done via a triangle support on either side and then placing the, uh, the steps. Only then should you start filling in the side with a wall. When it comes to building tree houses, once again, if we take the wood up here, you can use it via the zip line. Although you've got to be careful because it might do that. The other option of taking wood up to your, your tree house would be using a ramp like this. You can run up these, don't worry too much. And then from here, we can start building on here should we wish. The problem is that you can't branch out further, so you are limited to this footprint in my experience for the time being. Now, should you wish, you can connect your tree houses together via a rope gun, should you wish. I think we're going to struggle to get in that one. Like so. Or you could do the rope bridge trick as well, but sometimes it can be a little finicky to get the right positioning. At this point, we're left with one more option for building for the time being, at least in my eyes, and that is using water builds. Now you can build at sea, providing it's shallow enough for you to get the logs to the particular build. You can either use a plank system and you just keep on building straight out, but it does get very finicky and very difficult later on. The other problem with you building at the beach in the sea is that the water is salty as well, which means you're going to have to go inland anyway, just to get fresh water, at least until we can, until they release the rain catchers, which I'm sure are on the way. That does leave us with one other option though, and that is floating builds on freshwater lakes. Now this is great for 75% of the year because during winter it does tend to freeze over unless you stay in the area. If you stay in the area, I've noticed that it doesn't freeze over. So you can in theory sleep through winter or just not leave the, the lake for the whole of winter and you'll be fine, you'll be protect, protected. By the way, if you do want to check out how I actually built this uh, log mansion or lake house, uh, do check the video, I'll put a link to that in the, in the cards above. But before I tell you the secrets of this build, if you are enjoying the chilled out vibes, I recommend checking out my Spotify playlist. We've actually produced a load of music ourselves. It is copyright free. So if you are a content creator, you can use it yourself, both in your YouTube videos and your streams as well. And it's the perfect lo-fi vibe for building. Do check it out. The link is in the description below. So the way that we build on the water is really simple. Once you've got your logs, all you're going to do is build a simple footprint to your build. But bear in mind that you will not be able to extend this footprint until it is winter again. So make sure to build the footprint out as much as you want. Once you're happy with the foundations and if you want to do any more, you can like the supports I tend to do and just get an idea as to the, the roofing. You can just go to sleep until spring. And then once it's spring, you'll notice it's still frozen over. It will not turn to water until you leave the area. So that's what we're doing now. We're just going to head out of view shot and at this point, you're able to continue the build. We, I've put the zip line on the far side here, but you can see 
that we now have our little build in the middle of the water. And if anyone wants to get at us, they're going to have to swim for the next three seasons at least. Obviously, it's an incomplete build. We still have plenty to do. So you're going to want to grab your chainsaw or your axe. Chop the wood down. And then hope that you've got enough space on your little island for the wood. You can see now that we're on the water. Floating. And like I mentioned, we can't really extend out from here. So once you've got the footprint done, then you can sleep through to the next season. Don't do it before then. But there you are, guys. This is my guide on advanced building tips. I hope you found it useful. If you have, please do hit the thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to keep you up to date with plenty of build uh, tricks with all the new items that are hopefully coming out soon. And if you want to know how I built this, do check out the video, which I will link now in the end screen. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to all of our amazing supporters. Most notably our solo clips patrons, James Irwin, Fireflesser and Trebor, as well as our Lunas, the Calamity Ben, Star, Shoku the Ammon Wolf and that Dude AW, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Scooter. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.